Hello, welcome back. The title here is Dividing Fractions and Mixed Numbers with Cross Cancellation. This is part one. So in the last couple of lessons, we've learned how to multiply fractions where we, what we call cross cancel, which means we pre-simplify ahead of the multiplication event, right? Here we're doing the same thing with division because as you know, division of two fractions is turned into multiplication. When we divide two fractions, the way we solve it is we always multiply, change it to multiplication, and take that second fraction and flip it over and execute the multiplication. So let's take a very simple example to understand how this works and how we can use cross cancellation as we learned in the last lesson. Let's say I have the fraction 1 half, and I'm going to divide that by the fraction 1 fourth. All right. So here I have 1 half divided by 1 fourth. What you do every single time is you take that 1 half, write it down, this division turns into multiplication and the 1 fourth gets flipped upside down to 4 over 1. So you see every division of fractions turns into multiplication of fractions. And the reason that that happens is has been covered in previous lessons, but it has to do with what a fraction means and what the nature of fraction division is. So if you're not sure why we switch to multiplication and flip, that's covered in previous lessons. Here we're just going to use that result. The bottom line is every time we turn it into multiplication. Now we can multiply, of course, but we want to learn the concept of cross cancellation here as we did in the last lesson. So what we do is instead of multiplying and then simplifying, we try to simplify first. We have a two and a four. We can divide both by two. Two divided by two is one and four divided by two is two. And so we now have these numbers replaced with the ones in purple and we can now multiply. One times two is two and one times one is one and two divided by one is two. And so the answer is two. Now what does this mean? Uh, I want to take a minute to talk about what it means. Here we have one half of a pizza. This is how much pizza one half is and we're dividing by one fourth. We're dividing by one fourth. So when we divide, what we're really trying to ask ourselves is, how many times can this thing fit inside of this? And you can see right away that if you have this much pizza divided into this by this much, how many times will it fit? One whole time, two whole times. And that's why it comes out to an answer of two, because when we actually start with this much and divide it by this, we're saying how many times will it fit inside? And of course it fits two times as we just said. All right, let's go and work a related problem and see if we can understand the meaning of it as well. Let's take the same two fractions, but just flip it around. How about one fourth? And we'll divide that by one half. So it's the same exact fractions, it's just changing the order in which the division is happening. So what we do to solve this division problem is we change it to multiplication. We start with the one fourth, we change this to multiplication, we take the second fraction, flip it over, two over one. And now I have the one fourth, times the two over one, and now I'm going to cross cancel over here. Before multiplying, I can see I have a two and a four. Two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. And then multiply, one times one is one, and two times one is two. So I get an answer of one half, right? What does this mean? So in this case, I actually start with the fraction one fourth, and I divide it by the fraction one half. So you're really asking yourselves, how many times does the fraction one half fit into this thing? How many times could you squeeze it in? Well, this thing is so big, it doesn't fit even one whole time. Notice that exactly half of this thing fits into here because it's too big. It doesn't all fit, only half of it fits. And because only half of it fits, half is the answer. So when you're looking at the problems for dividing fractions, something divided by something, it just means how many times will this second thing fit inside of the first thing? When the previous problem was one half divided by one fourth. How many times will this fit? One, two times. So the answer worked out to two. When we flip the order, how many times will this fit inside of this? Well, it doesn't even go once. It only goes one half. Only a half of this fits, so the answer is a half. But no matter how it works out with pictures, mathematically we handle it the same way. We always turn the division into multiplication and we always flip the second fraction over uh, to perform the multiplication, which is how we do the division, and then we try to cross cancel ahead of time in order to get the final answer. Now, if you didn't cross cancel, as we learned before, you could just multiply one times two is two, and four times one is four, you get two fourths, and you could simplify that to one half. So it's kind of like, as I said in the last lesson, it's kind of like when you're making a soup, right? You can put salt and pepper before you start cooking the broth, 
or you can cook everything, and then when you put it in your plate, you can add the salt and pepper. Either way, you're putting the same amount of salt and pepper in the soup. Whether you do it ahead of time, or you do it after you cook, the, the amount of salt is the same. So when you're using, doing fractions, multiplying or dividing, you can multiply or divide and then simplify to get the answer, or you can pre-simplify before doing the multiplication step. But either way, if you do it correctly, you're going to get to the same place. And that's the, the moral, that's the point of this lesson here. All right, now that we have the basic idea out of the way, we can now just practice and get as much practice as we can, can handle. Two thirds, let's divide it by six sevenths. So what happens is we write down the two thirds. The division always changes to multiplication. The second fraction flips over to seven sixths. And then, of course, I can multiply 2 times 7 to get 14, 3 times 6 to get 18, and then I would have to simplify at the end. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pre-simplify, also called cross-cancellation. I'm looking for pairs in the diagonals, 2 and 6. I can divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. The 7 and the 3 I can't really simplify, or the 7 and the 3 I really can't do anything further. So I can just write the answer down. 1 times 7 is 7, and 3 times 3 is 9. 7 ninths is the final answer. And notice this is fully simplified, because if we pre-simplify fully, then after we get the answer, we don't have any further simplification because we've already done it ahead of time. That's kind of the beauty of it. And as the numbers get larger and larger, we're saving more and more work uh, for ourselves. Let's take a look at 1 fifth, and we'll divide it by 9 tenths. All right, we take the 1 fifth, write it down. The division changes to multiplication. The second fraction flips over, 10 ninths. Every time we divide, we do it exactly the same way. Here, I'm going to write this stuff down. Again, 1 fifth times 10 ninths. And I'm looking for something to pre-simplify. I see the 5 and the 10. I divide by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. I can't simplify any of these. And so I'm done with that, and I can just multiply. 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 9 is 9, and the answer is 2 ninths. And there's nothing further to simplify, so I'm done. All right, what about 3 fourths divide by 5 sixths? All right, change to multiplication. The 3 fourths stays untouched. We change it to multiplication. We take the second fraction and flip over 6 fifths. And I'm going to rewrite this so that we can then do our simplification. 3 fourths times 6 fifths. How can we pre-simplify? 3 and 5 I can't simplify. 6 and 4 I'll divide by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And what I get for my answer is 3 times 3 is 9 and 2 times 5 is 10. 9 tenths and I cannot simplify that any further. So literally everything we're doing in this lesson is exactly what we've done in the last lesson with one other step. We have to change the division to multiplication first. All right, what about the number two divided by two thirds? You might say, whoa, we never learned that. But two can be always written as two over one, right? We turn it into our fraction, then we still turn this to multiplication, then we still flip this over to three halves. So the only step there is we change the whole number into fraction. Let me rewrite this, two over one, three halves. And we look for things to simplify. We have a pair of twos. I'll divide two divided by two is one, two divided by two is one. And then we multiply. One times three is three, and one times one is one. Three divided by one is three, and the answer is just three. All right. Let's take a look. We only have a couple more problems in this lesson. Let's take a look at two-fifths divided by 10. All right, what do we have here? We have 2 fifths. Now let's not change the multiplication yet. Let's just turn this 10 into 10 over 1. Now in the next step, we will change this to multiplication and flip over the second fraction, and it needs to be then 1 tenth. Now let me rewrite what I have. It's 2 fifths times 1 tenth, and I'm going to pre-simplify. 2 and 10, I'll divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And then 1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 5, 
25. And the answer is 1 25th. All right, only two more problems. How about a mixed number? One and one half, divide that by three fourths. First step is always to change the mixed number to improper. Two times one is two, one more is three over two. We keep this as division for now, three fourths. Now we change to multiplication, three halves. Change to multiplication, flip over, four thirds. And then I'm gonna rewrite this, three halves times four thirds. And now I see I have a three and a three, three divided by three is one, and three divided by three is one. And then I also see I have a four and a two. I divide by two. Two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. One times two is two on the top, one times one is one on the bottom, and two divided by one is just two, and so the answer works out to be exactly two. All right, here is our very last problem. What about one and three fourths? Divide that by one and one half. So step number one is to just change these to improper fractions. One times four is four, plus three is seven fourths. Keep it as division for now. Two times one is two, one more is three halves from here. Next, change to multiplication. The seven fourths stays the same, change the multiplication, flip this over, it becomes two thirds. Now I'm gonna rewrite it so I can then cross cancel. Or pre-simplify. Two and a four, divide by two. Two divided by two is one, and four divided by two is two. Can't do anything with this. And so I have seven times one is seven, and two times three is six. I have seven sixths. I wanna change this to improper. Six can only go one time. Six times one is six. The difference, seven minus six is one, and it's out of six. So I have one and one six, or you could also write it as seven sixth. So here, we have conquered the idea of dividing fractions with cross cancellation. So if we have any mixed numbers, we change them to improper, but either way, we always change that division. If you look at every one of these problems, we always change division of fractions into multiplication and flip over that second fraction. And then we multiply. So all fraction division turns into multiplication. That's how we solve every problem. And because it, because it turns into multiplication, then we always try to cross cancel ahead of time because it saves us time. In these problems, the numbers are pretty small, so it didn't save us that much time. But I'd like you to practice these and then follow me on to the next lesson where the fractions will get a little bit uglier with larger numbers and you will see how cross canceling ahead of time saves a ton of time when solving problems in the next lesson.